A pub in Canning Town, East London, is an unlikely rallying point for a cultural revolution. But here at the Bridge House, the shifting world of teenage fashion is enjoying a new flash in the pan. After punk has come the rebirth of the mods. Monday night at the Bridge House is now Mod Monday, when bands like Squire entertain the troops of the new Mod Army. Those whose memories go back to 1965 will recall the trademarks of the cult first time round. And they've hardly changed. Italian scooters, short hair, a trim appearance, and deafening music. 200 miles north of Canning Town is a species of mod which pours scorn on all the talk of renewal and revival. In Yorkshire, the mods haven't come back, they've never been away. And they rather resent all the attention being paid to London mods, who are mere novices at the game. Do you reckon that they're not true? No, no, I don't. Yeah, I know. Our club's been good four years now. Four years. Four years, and they've started the past six months. Not on, man. There is one or two Southern Scooter Clubs now. And they fetch them in vans, the scooters, like. And Matt said when we go down Brighton and that, they fetch them in van. How do you mean? They fetch the scooters in, in back on a van. While we travel about 240 odd miles, eh? What do you mean? They don't actually like riding them? But the, the, the scooters is not reliable. They don't look after them. Like, they're not as, as interested like, as us. Most people over 40 remember with a shudder the finest hours of the old time mods. Their differences of opinion at South Coast resorts with the rockers, whose powerful motorbikes and leather jackets were enough to inflame any self-respecting mod into instant assault and battery. To their elders, it seemed like a threat to the very fabric of society. But society survived, and the mods and the rockers disappeared into oblivion. Though in the case of the mods, it was not before they'd composed the standing orders of a cult which presumably could go on being revived every 15 years ad nauseam. As in those days, the current mod hero is a musician, Ian Page from Ilford, who got his O-levels but dropped out of further education to form a group called Secret Affair. His record company describes him gushingly as a star of the 1980s. It's a way of walking down the street in the suit that really counts. It's what you feel in your head and why you're wearing those clothes is the way to spot a mod. All youth culture is trying to say the same thing. It's young people trying to make their voices heard, um, searching for an identity, for, uh, trying to discover themselves as an individual. Every, youth, every young person tries to do that, and this is an, a new way of doing it. It's a fashion. Up in Yorkshire, there's a solid, well-established flavour to the mod fraternity. Whereas in London, you feel the whole thing might fizzle out tomorrow if something more interesting came along, here in York, for instance, the local scooter club has been going for five years and could last another five with no trouble. These boys inherited a passion for Italian scooters from younger uncles and elder brothers, who were mods in the good old days. The important thing is to have an original Italian model, and not the later version made in India. Then you can customize it to your taste by painting murals on the panels and fitting as many wing mirrors as the machine will take. These mods go on regular runs to northern resorts, and today the York section are meeting the Barnsley lads to plan a forthcoming trip to Blackpool. Many of these northern mods were extras in the film Quadrophenia, a celebration of the dear, dead, uncomplicated days of 1965 when there was something to fight for and someone to fight against. Would you regard the rockers as your traditional enemy or not? We saw Not someone as way from the uh, South End, didn't we? Yeah. Great chopper men. Great dirty. <laughs> Great dirty, I tell me. Close your lip, don't lock, won't he? Did you speak to them? No, they were going to kick us off. They're coming across for a word, I should be saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Fine. 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 Fine
Every teenage craze has one thing in common. There's money in it for somebody. The Quadrophenia fashion show at the Lyceum Ballroom in the Strand seems a million miles away from Mod Monday in Canning Town and the Scooter Club of Barnsley. Celebrities like John Entwistle and Kenny Jones of The Who are here because their money financed the film. Ian Page and Secret Affair are here because a rising star must be seen in the right places. The rest of the audience comprises sections of the pop and fashion trades which would like a slice of the action. This is high fashion mod, an extremist version of the standard article which you can't help suspecting no one outside a fashion show will ever wear. As the man who discovered Twiggy, Justin de Villeneuve has an eye for these things. After all, the 60s was his period. When the mod culture died out, you know, suddenly pop art and op art started becoming a big thing. And we pioneered that with the women jet jackets and um, T-shirts with targets on, stuff like that. And we got ignored completely. No, no one remembered the who was instigating that. And now we figure, well, if there's going to be a new mod culture, why shouldn't we partake in some way? Is it just purely a commercial venture? As far as I know, yes. I felt almost insulted by it, really, especially as it was the Who. I couldn't... They have such a reputation, you know. Um, everybody, everybody in the business respects them so much. And it was so superficial, and it was so obviously jumping on it. If Ian Page and Secret Affair are ever to rival the Who in mod mythology, it probably helps if they now believe their old idols have feet of clay. Secret Affair are currently rehearsing their first LP at a studio in Notting Hill, and that's a privilege granted only to the lucky few in these days of expensive recording. People say, well, who are the enemies of mods? You know, who do they fight? Because last time round it was uh, rockers, wasn't it? And it's not punks, it's not robbers, it's not Ted's, it's the media. It's the, it's the big business people, the, the people who are trying to control our lives, that's our enemy. But you're getting brought into the, the, the media and the big business making albums and singles and getting into the charts, aren't you? Yeah, but it's, we're doing it, not other people. And we're not exploiting, we're not exploiting anybody else because we, 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 belong, with those, we belong with those kids. And those kids want mod music and mod bands, and we're giving it to them, which is a fair swap. That's a good folly. Uh, don't last long, don't work as well. We know that <laughs> no, it's not that you talk. My say it's cheerful. Some give the mod revival three months before it makes way for the next cult of the moment. Some say it could last a year or even more. But up in Yorkshire, a safe distance from the frantic trend setting of London, the scooter club boys are happy to ignore the waywardness of fashion. They like scooters and short hair. And they've got nephews and younger brothers coming along, who seem certain to keep up the family tradition.